Hello, my name is Frosty Panda, and today we're going to be going over Dot Damn Basics. You will find that my other videos are short and to the point. In doing so, some information can be lost in translation. I do apologize for this, but to keep videos short and sweet and also straight to the point, I try not to go over too much information or be redundant. That being said, info that may be in one tutorial video may be missing in another. Hopefully this guide for the basics will clear up any confusion and make it easier for y'all to edit the .dam file and also maybe find new interesting ways to modify your files. First, let's start with the most basic thing we need to know, locating object IDs. The first thing you want to do is load a blank map. Make sure it is actually blank. Terrain should be forest, elevation is flat, no vegetation, and no water. The reason why we do this is because if a map is generated with vegetation or water, we will get object IDs placed during the random generation of the map, making it more difficult to find the object ID of the item we're looking for. Once you have a map generated, you are going to take any item you are looking for and place it on the map. Save that map and open the map file with a text editor. Search for object, and you will find one object in the list with that item's ID number. So if you have an existing map you already made and need a bookshelf's object ID, just create a new map and place that exact same bookshelf. Then you'll be able to find that specific bookshelf's object ID. You can then go back to your original maps.dam file and edit that bookshelf however you see fit. Now let's go over the basics of what we see here and what we can do. Here is the position of the item on the X and Y plane. Adjust these to move your item left, right, up, or down on the map. This is perfect for making very small adjustments or if you want to merge an item into another item. Since unlike in Dungeon Alchemist, there's no restriction and we can put this skull wherever we want. Next we have the height. Just like the X and Y position, this dictates how above or below the ground the object is. If you want a buried object or one floating, this is the value you want to play with. This is the scale of an object. Changing this can increase and decrease an object's size however you see fit. Here we have rotation. This tells the map which way the object is facing. And finally, we have flipped. This does exactly what you might think and flips the object. Pointless on items that are symmetrical, but can be used on other objects. Here's a scenario that I know a lot of people will run into. I have this library and I want to edit only one of these bookshelves, however I do not know the object ID. Well the first thing we are going to do is save this map. Now we're going to create a new blank map and place the exact same bookshelf down. Now that we have this placed, we're going to go find this book's object ID in this new map file. And there it is. I'm going to save this in a new notepad for later. Now we're going to open my library file. We have the object ID, but what if I only want to edit one bookshelf out of the seven that's on the map? The easiest solution I found is setting everything at different heights, starting from one and going up with each occurrence of that object ID. After you finish setting each one at a different height, save it and load the map. Now you can see each bookshelf is on a different plane. If it was the middle bookshelf I wanted to edit, I know I set it at a height of 5. I can go back in and know it's the 5th object ID down in my list. Hopefully this helps clear up some misunderstandings and gives you a clear look at how to work around and find objects within the .dam file. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.